Honeybees belong to one of the few species of social insects which are able to survive winter periods as a colony. The correct management of colonies can improve the bees' chances in this struggle for survival. Management of bee colonies by annual rotation. An effective way of preventing diseases. Management of bees by annual rotation shows how colonies can be managed so as to remain healthy and strong throughout the year. These stocks have been well fed in autumn and are still in their winter sleep. Modern hives can be left in the open. Good hive stands protect the hives from rising damp and against the chill from the ground. Occasionally, the beekeeper must check that entrance holes are not blocked by ice or debris. Here we can see an example of the good winter cluster of a healthy, strong colony. In early spring, a good supply of pollen is especially important for the rapid development of a colony of bees. Willows are a valuable source of nutritious pollen. Because the bees' range of flight is very limited during this chilly time of the year, such sources of early pollen should not be too far away from the apiary. When making a first examination in spring, check the food reserves, the state of the brood nest and the number of frames covered by bees. This colony fulfills all our expectations. Last year's care and management have paid off handsomely. The apiary is situated near some allotment gardens. They give hives a good shelter from cold winds and provide an abundance of nectar and pollen. Here we want to demonstrate a simplified form of spring inspection. After tilting the upper brood chamber, an inspection of the passages between the frames gives enough information on the stock's strength its brood and food reserves. Other excellent sources of pollen and nectar are fruit blossom and dandelions. Surrounded by stimulating sources, these colonies have developed so well that the brood nest can be expanded. To start with, we remove the wax drawing frame already containing sealed drone brood. The comb in this Varroa bait frame is cut out. It is our first step in the fight against the dreaded mite. 
Because Varroa prefers to reproduce itself in sealed drone cells, the destruction of drone bait comb enables us to reduce the number of parasites considerably. The second wax drawing frame is also full of drone larvae, but none are sealed. It remains in the hive until our next inspection. Once more, we are able to assess colony strength as we tip up the upper brood box. As a next step, we remove the plastic foil which serves here as a crown board and replace it with a queen excluder. Then we give more room by adding a third brood box as a honey super. This new brood chamber has been filled in such a way that frames with drawn comb alternate with others with foundation. Such an arrangement of frames is important because it will provide us with many frames of drawn brood comb for the formation of new colonies at a later date. Furthermore, this way of giving room ensures that no sugary winter feed gets into the honey crop. The stock has now three stories and is well prepared for the forthcoming nectar flows. In many districts, it is the oilseed rape which provides the main crop of spring. Because of its rich pollen supply, the colonies can soon grow strong and many show first signs of an inclination to swarm. This is, of course, just the right and natural moment for making increase. All colonies must now be examined regularly at seven to nine day intervals for swarming intentions and the need for more storage space. This is best done by tilting the upper brood box when swarm cells can be seen clearly after a quick glance into the gaps between the bottom bars of frames. Again, the Varroa bait combs of the wax drawing frames are cut out in order to reduce the growth of the populations of the parasite and provide the bees with the opportunity to build comb. Next, we examine the supers. This stock has drawn out the sheets of foundation and the honeycombs are two-thirds full of honey. It is obvious that the colony requires more storage space. Burr comb is scraped off the top bars before the stock is given another honey super. In this second super, we repeat the arrangement of alternating drawn frames with others of foundation. All stocks are dealt with according to their strength and their need for more storage room. When climatic conditions are favorable in late spring, the robinia, also called false acacia, provides an important crop.
These colonies have been brought back to the home apiary and are ready for the removal of the honey and for shook swarming, one way of making a colony increase. Scales, a swarm box, a funnel and a sprayer are required for this job. The weight of the empty swarm box is recorded first of all. Furthermore, we must have a spare floor, a crown board and an empty hive body at hand to take the frames of honey after all bees have been brushed off. The funnel must be sprayed with water before we open the first hive. This helps when shaking bees into the swarm box. When raising the upper brood box, it is best to puff smoke into the passages between the combs. This makes many young bees leave the brood nest and flee into the honey supers. Next, we lift off the supers and set them aside. This prevents young bees returning into the brood nest. Covering the hive reduces the danger of robbing. Here the peak of a colony's development can be seen clearly and bees and honey must be removed at once in order to avoid swarming. Shaken or brushed into the funnel, the bees fall into the swarm box underneath. Comb after comb is brushed free of bees until the shook swarm has reached the desired weight. As a rule, it is possible to take one shook swarm from each colony. Should colony strength be insufficient to give us full weight, then it is possible to add more bees from another colony.